Whenever I ride through the streets, I see trees in all shades of green. I see people happily walking down the platforms with their families, rays of evening sunlight shining down on us. I see cars in different shapes, colors, and sizes. When it rains, it reminds me of my home country. The distinct smell and sound it makes, that is what it's like living in Myanmar. The reason I'm here in Thailand is because of Myanmar's underdeveloped infrastructure. Though the streets here in Thailand are great, they don't give me the same vibes or feelings that my country did. The characteristics of underdeveloped countries are high levels of debt, the resource curse, colonizations, and corruptions, which lead to low levels of education, improper sanitation, and limited access to healthcare. Underprivileged nations have high levels of debt because they want to improve their infrastructures for many reasons like tourism and raising the quality of living. Sri Lanka is currently $51 billion of debt because they want to improve their infrastructures. As of August of 2022, their, in their inflation had reached 64.3% and their food inflations have reached 93.7% in addition to many citizens losing their jobs. Another reason why countries are underdeveloped is because of the resource curse. The Democratic Republic of Congo has many resources, yet is still underdeveloped. Although cobalt is a valuable mineral, the nation has failed to use it to successfully develop their economy. Cobalt is worth around $20,000 to $70,000 per metric ton. Foreign countries like the US and Britain are attracted to their resources, thus taking advantage of them. Locals are not profiting because they only earn 30 pence an hour. The businesses are owned by foreign countries like the Chinese company and the American companies, which makes them earning the most money. How about Myanmar? Oils and gas, many, many minerals and gems, timber and forest products, hydropower potential, and many, many more. Of these, natural gas, rubies, jade, and timber logs are the ones that provide the economy a substantial portion. But the country isn't developing because the resources have been used in unsustainable and non-transparent ways during the decades of military ruling and economic mismanagement. Colonization is one of the many reasons why countries are underdeveloped, which is because colonizers take full advantage of their natural resources and the people of their country. After Portugal colonized Angola, they were unable to gain their independence for four centuries, which affected their lifestyle. Portugal exploited Angola's rubber, diamond, coffee, and oils, which left locals with no source of income, thus remaining an underdeveloped country. Another country affected by colonization would be Somalia. After the Somali nation was colonized by the British, they were split into clan-based zones. Although water, land, pasture, camels, and women were fiercely fought, the surrounding zones were aware. Corruption has created a rippling effect in the economy of underdeveloped nations. Protesters in South Africa were protesting because it has been revealed that the COVID protective gear was bought for five times the normal price. Corruption is the main reason why South Africa is underdeveloped and why many of their citizens are unemployed. Violence has created a significant negative impact on the, on the economy of underdeveloped nations. The average economic cost on the top 10 most violent nations was 35.7%. On the other hand, on the top 10 most peaceful nations, it was just 4.2%. Let's take Afghanistan as an example. In the 1970s, it was well-developed, had good infrastructures, roads, 
stabilities in market, and education. But then in the last 20 years, it was all gone. Why? Because of violence. After, after the Soviet invasion in 1979, Afghanistan collapsed and hasn't been developing ever since. Now, Afghanistan is one of the world's least developed countries. The reason why closing the gaps of underdevelopment is important is because it makes a positive impact on 77% of the world's population living in those underdeveloped countries. I believe that if citizens of the world had the knowledge to be able to spread awareness about developing from natural resources, they would be a much more developed nation. There are many ways to close gaps in underdeveloped nations, such as spreading awareness, encouraging local businesses, and entrepreneurships. Realistically, it's imp it is impossible to have peace without development in the economy. If all nations of the world peacefully try to improve their infrastructures without colonizations or corruptions, the world will undoubtedly be a better place to live in. These are some of the many reasons why increasing sustainable development should be a goal for all nations of the world as a whole. I hope this speech enlightened you to why it's harder for underdeveloped nations to have peace. Thank you all and have a great evening.